Yeah, that's because there's not enough of it out here. Like, yes, the game is to be sold, not told. But if you come and break bread with me and work with me, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Like, okay, you rap, cool. Take a number, get in line. They took an L at the show. They couldn't get their homies to come buy a ticket. That's what that was. Hey man, here with my brother, Prem. Skirt, skirt, Glendale to the north side. We're here doing the exclusive interview. Exclusivity, man. What y'all know about that one? They got the Prem Justice interview. Stop it. Arizona, I am not asking you for anything. I am telling you that on October 18th, we will make history because we will rock. It's your boy, De La Premi. We're here right now with the definition of active. And I got the one and only, you know, the king of the city, the mayor of the underground, you know, my big brother, one who's really out here changing lives, you know, leading the way, paving the way for people like us to make shit happen, you know. Um, one and only justice, man. Respect the motherfucker underground. What's good, you bro? How we doing? Man, I ain't shit. You the truth. You the future. Man, come on, G. We good. Cut it out. <laughs> you, gotta get... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Oh, God. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. The definition of fucking active. Get active or get left. Get left. You know what I'm saying? I like that shit. You gotta live right. So check this out, man. Uh, Tell everybody where... Respect the underground started. Like, what was the beginning? Like, how you? Let's start. Let's, you, know, you know what? Let's go back farther. Let's tell everybody about Cutthroat Logic. Respect the underground started from Cutthroat Logic. Let's Respect go. the underground started from a QP and a house party. Talk about it. Nineteen ninety nine. You know what I'm saying? Like, there were no venues. There was nobody throwing rap concerts. Local concerts did not exist. We were still in high school, um, and we started throwing house parties. Setting up kegs, charging $5 at the door, flipping sacks inside, getting a PA system, rapping. And that's how Cutthroat Logic got their first management deal with Soulfly to go on to be featured on a gold rock album and tour stadiums in front of 10,000 people for OzFest. So I got a a million-dollar management deal off of a house party. And those house parties eventually turned into what it was called Phoenix Live, mm. which was Cutthroat Logic. We created a fake promotional company because we didn't want people to think we were throwing our own shows. Mm. We wanted people to think we were getting booked by promoters so it would increase our value. Yes. And then we went to Mason Jar. They gave us a Wednesday night. We sold that bitch out for like three or four months in like the middle of summer. It's like 150 fucking degrees. That's fine. And um, then eventually from there, you know, we... You know, established the brand, Cutthroat Logic. Cutthroat Logic. Low key was five members originally. It was Asha Raboin, Baba Tunde Raboin, Kamal Raboin, Deontay Perry, myself, and then and Megadeth, uh, DJ Megadeth. But my best friend Kamal. And Baba Tunde Raboin, for the record, is the Everest College guy. What you doing on that couch? What you doing with your life? Get off that couch. That's, that's Baba Tunde. That, that man is like the Rock Ham cannabis of Arizona hip hop. That's crazy. The man can rap. Incredible, but he couldn't write a song to save his life, and he's just a complete asshole. So no one ever heard his music. It never came out. Like he'll he'll nitpick a song for two years, and I love you, big bro. I love you. You're my big brother for life, but I do not like you. <laughs> so, Kamal passed away in '99 when we got our first management deal with with Soulfly, and uh, we actually had letters from Jive, Death Row, like major labels were interested. Yeah. And because he passed, so tragically. All of our deals got pulled because our demo was no longer relevant. They're like, well, this demo doesn't, you know, this dude, he was the standout of the group. Like Kamal was like, if uh, Guru from Gangstar, DJ Premier and Guru called Kamal if Ice-T had a baby with Wu-Tang. Damn. Because he had bars, but his his tone was like T. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's coming from, rest in peace to the God, Guru. Like we brought Guru a bag of purple weed in 1999 at America West Arena when he was on tour, Rage Against the Machine. At America West Arena. Deadass. I brought him weed, and I and he was like, and we were doing street team for the label, and he was like, what you want for this bag of weed? I said, big homie, I don't want anything. Mm. I just want to roll a blunt with you, and will you please listen to our CD? That's fire. And he was like, bet, put it on. And I've never seen a man, like, he rolled up a Philly Titan, like, probably put a quad in that bitch. He never passed it. <sighs> He just sat there and smoked it and listened to our demo. And, like, he liked it so much that he was like, I'm going to put you guys on the guest list. Come to the show tonight. Mm. They were going to bring us on stage. 
But we were so excited and got so blowed out. We showed up late and, like, barely even got to watch him perform. Damn. Like, he was going to bring us on stage, but we were late because, I don't know, if security wouldn't let us in or whatever. Like, didn't believe we were there for Guru. And uh, they listened to the demo backstage, and it was a big deal, bro. Like, we were on. Because nobody was doing this. 1999, I was 18 years old. I was just a child. Mm. But we were still thugging, you know. So you you guys are starting out. Like, the foundation comes from throwing shows. It yeah, absolutely did. You know because what I mean? Because you couldn't get your music heard unless you performed live. Facts. You didn't, there was there was no radio supporting Arizona hip-hop. CDs were just becoming a thing that were even, you couldn't even get a CD from the studio. Like, we were just getting CDs pressed. So yeah. we were out there hustling CDs, but not everybody even had, like, access to that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, to get your music heard. Like, there's a lot of Cutthroat Logic music that was only performed live. Yeah, parties. No one stuff. ever heard it on Wax because That's it smart. never got recorded. There's, like, probably a dozen Cutthroat Logic songs that never saw a CD or a studio. But the fans knew it, though. They knew them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's hard. a record called Don't Bring Justice. That's a real song. Oh, shit. Perform that after retirement. We're going to get to that. Hey, we'll Don't Bring Justice. Yeah, that was a real song because I was notorious for fucking parties up. <laughs> oh, shit. So, like, they would call my best friend and be like, yo, come out. Like, we're going to have this party come out but you can't bring justice just promise you're not gonna bring him and he'd be like oh yeah he ain't coming i'll be next to him <laughs> and he put it on speaker and we'd laugh and then we'd go you know do what we did so yeah that's that's the inception so without cut the logic there would have been no art to you that's hard so explain to the people who don't know like maybe people like who are not from arizona looking and watching these interviews like what is art to you and what is it to arizona <sighs> respect the underground is a call to action mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we named the company Respect the Underground um, because of... We just dealt with a lot of dark fuck shit in the industry. Like, we got played on fake bookings, fake record deal meetings, you know what I'm saying? Fake... You know, there's just so much darkness because it comes from street culture. Mm. Hip-hop and street culture are synonymous. One one. So you're going to deal with the dark side. You're going to deal with con artists and fugazi, blah, blah, blah. So, like... We took a big L on an event. I lost like 100 racks, you know what I'm saying, or 50 racks, whatever, I don't remember at this time. But um, I was so hurt that I was like, I'm going to create a company that just gives people access to honest, good people. Mm -hmm. DJs, venues, give it a, a transparent business model to where I used to get paid a dollar a ticket. Fuck that dollar a ticket. I'm going to, as a promoter, take a dollar a ticket, and I'm going to give you nine. Bullshit. On a ten dollar ticket, Bullshit. where when we were getting booked for shows, I would get one dollar a ticket. Unless I sold three hundred dollars in tickets, then they would up me to three dollars a ticket. Damn, and I would get my whole three hundred dollars, you know, off of a hundred tickets. Do you sold. hear that? You see, like people be complaining about selling tickets and paying to play and be a part of show. Man, I was getting one dollar a ticket. Dollar a ticket, two dollars a ticket, and if you didn't sell your allotment, you, you weren't allowed to perform. They should they, bring they that would, back. They would be like, "No, nah, you're not getting on stage." But with us, we no longer we don't even sell performance slots. We sell promotional packages that include a performance slot and a ticket link and a website or and a, and, a, and a guest list and a, and physical tickets to allow you to recoup mm. and profit. Like I'll give you I'll give you ten twenty grand worth of tickets. Give me a little two three hundred dollars. It's a fact. This and if you fact. can squeeze ten percent out of thirty thousand dollars worth of tickets and you can get three racks off of ten percent, then give me my ten percent. Thank you. That's all I want. I don't want nothing more. We got a group of maniacal militants. They're on May 14th, Phoenix Hip Hop Fest. They are going to make five to six thousand dollars on their performance slot. Mm. They're blown away because they're like, "So we don't owe you any more money?" And I'm like, "No, man, you're good. Like you gave me my my little cut. I'm cool." They're they're, they're just they're, but it doesn't make sense. Like we have all this money. Like we don't we owe it? And I'm like, "No, bro, take that. Go on tour, shoot some videos, press some T-shirts, build your brand." Cause it is, it's not about you trying to take from anybody. You trying no. to help build. You know what I mean? Like, and then on top of that, you're learning the game by learning how like the hustle is supposed to work. Correct. So that's actually setting the bar for you in your career to know what you should expect out of shows. We eat, but we also require people to hold themselves accountable. Facts. Like folks have a delusion of what a concert is. They think they're gonna get on stage and. You know, Puffy's going to fucking see him from somebody's fucking live feed and fly him out and change their life. Like, fuck out of here with all that shit. Do, do Cinderella stories happen? 100%. Yeah. But people also win the lottery. Mm. So, you know, gamble how you choose. Like, 
I choose to hold people accountable, but we also give them the tools and resources necessary to be successful. And if they don't have a network, establish a network and a brand and build a brand in your infant phases by humbling yourself and giving away tickets, inviting people and putting them on your VIP list. Like, bro, you can get a $100, $150 package with us, get a radio interview, get some radio play, get these tickets, and have 100 people show up. And if everybody gives you a $5 donation, you just made $500. It sounds so simple when you kick it like that, huh? Yeah, but they don't get it. They make it hard. Because they can't wrap their brain around, what do you mean I got to sell fucking tickets? Motherfucker, you book Justin Bieber right now, he's going to sell 60,000 tickets. That's the leverage. Like, it's just, how did he go about that? They put his name on a billboard, ran some ads. Do you feel like it's an entitlement thing? What do you feel like? What do you feel like? It's a combination of lack of understanding, Mm. entitlement. Lack of work ethic. Like, these dudes really think that because they rap that people are supposed to fuck with them because it's so dope. Because you got to understand, as an artist, when you listen to your own music, it's fucking great. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it. You know, and that's you're supposed to feel that way. Like, you can't ride around the city bumping your own shit with your girl blowing, like, dreaming about what could happen. Yeah. What's the fucking point? You know, like, nah, this, yeah. this shit is like a lottery ticket. We do this because... We are the dreamers. And, like, when we make that music and when we're in the studio having that that experience, like, some people play basketball, some people play video games. I rap. Facts. And my, my passion wound up feeding my family mm. and allowing me to impact my community and, and teach other people how to feed their families. I'm a result of that, too, as well. I've known Justice for a lot of years. So, you know, I've, I've definitely went through that program and seen with my own eyes, been able to pay many bills, you know, have many wonderful dinners off of off of some of those tickets to the festival. They're real. It's it's a real currency. We put we put millions of dollars worth a million dollars worth of currency inside of these streets. Let's talk about the festival too, because first it started as you guys throwing fire shows consistently every single month. A whole bunch of artists, you know what I mean? Artists that are affiliated with you guys, and then doing it for other artists who not are who aren't affiliated with you guys, just off the strength. You know what I mean? So, what, like, when did you have the epiphany to like, you know what, I need to throw like a big festival and bring everybody together. I was talking to Trap House. Rest God, in peace, God, Trap God House, God rest man. his soul. And I was at work, and I called him because we had just thrown the second RTU, and he sold it out with 750 people. He broke the record that cut the Logic Hell. We did our album release party 2004. We had 700 and uh, I think like 14 people or 700 and something people. And Trap beat it by 740 people. There's no piece of Trap. Man. And I was like, because it was a moment, it was a pivotal moment in the company's, like, trajectory to where I told Blaze, I'm like, Blaze, like, because the first RTU was cutthroat. Mm. Like, we carried the weight. I knew we would sell it out. I knew we would do 600 people because I, I put my, you know what I'm saying, effort behind it. And I knew my network was going to come out because it, it was in North Phoenix on 32nd and Cactus. In your hood. Uh, Put Yes, my hood. I've never thrown a show in my own neighborhood other than a house party. Mm. So, like, putting the word out, people were like, fuck you mean, it's 10 minutes from the crib, I'm there. So, like, we sold that bitch out and cracked it off. And after, I was like, all right, cool. Can we do this with someone else? Mm. And I looked at Blaze. I'm like, who are we going to do this with? And it was easy. Like, it was, it was, it was, it was the only option is trap. So I called Trap. I'm like, Trap, you want to drop an album and do an album release party? And he was like, I got Michael Knight ready. Or no, is it Michael Knight or Kiss My Converse? I think it was Michael Knight. God, I can't remember which album it was. Might have been Kiss My Converse. Mm. But it, no, it was Michael Knight. It was Michael Knight. Both our albums. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and he did it. He blew it out the water. And after that show, I called him. I said, we need to continue to do this and build to the point where we can throw an all-day event mm. and make it a, a festival. With, like, three fucking stages. Like, I thought three stages was just so, like, impossible. Like, how are we going to, where are we going to find three stages? You know, because that was such a crazy concept. Because this is 2012, 2013. It's 10 years ago when the city was active, but it was very fragmented. And, um, like, there really wasn't any, like, organization. Like, nobody was throwing consistent... Arizona hip hop events that were successful. You guys started with three stages. That's crazy. And now it's like three stages is a joke. Yeah. Now how many stages is it? Um, In 2019, it was six. Justice on average, how many artists are performing and sign up and are are at the Arizona hip hop festival every single year? Well, so on average, so things have changed because of the pandemic. Um, In 2019, we had six stages. 
two days, 375 performing acts. For 2020, we had the Guinness Book of World Records scheduled to fly out because we were the largest independent hip-hop festival in the world with the most performers. That's crazy. And another record I was going to break is I was going to do the world's largest cypher with the most MCs and the longest cypher. I was just going to have everybody on the bill come in and spit a 16. Just start rap. Yeah. And we were going to rap for two days straight. <sighs> For so we were going to break two records. And they we were in contact with him because Mega Ran got hella Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were in contact with him. And they were like, yeah, just fly us out. You got to fly him from England. So now... Salute to Mega Ran. The festival, yeah, salute. One of the coldest gods in the state. Sure. But now, because of the acclimation with the pandemic, like in 2020, we were a completely virtual festival. Hmm. 2021, we did two festivals to make up for the one that shit the bed. But we were still in the middle of a fucking pandemic. So we weren't allowed to like shut the block down. We weren't allowed to set up stages. Like it was a completely different dy- dynamic. So you guys had to adapt. We adapted. We adapted. We pivoted. And honestly, it was the most successful festival we've ever had financially. There it go. There it go. You know, because we imp- implemented TV. We filmed the whole thing, put it on Roku TV. We implemented radio. We implemented opening up the floodgates to everyone from out of town. We had over 75 acts fly out from all over the country. Bridging as gaps. far as Alaska, um, upstate New York, you know, the boroughs, fucking Florida, Chicago. Uh, like, they were, they came from everywhere. We cats from Mississippi. Like, and they're sending cash apps, like, yo, how much to get on? And we, I, when I say that out of town tax on, on the, that's dead ass. We oh, treat fine. this street like flipping packs. If you're coming in from out of town, you're getting taxed. And that's just that's just facts. Like I'm not no hate. It's part of the game. Yeah, but if you coming in from out of town, you gonna take this and triple up. That's how it is everywhere. Nah, bro, you're getting taxed. Facts. And I'm not even. There's. I tell them, like, where are you from? Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna throw you a little bit of that out of towner tax, but I'll get you. We'll get you right. You won't get robbed. It's we'll take a, care of you. There's been a lot of great artists that have came through respect the underground and have been able to like grow as artists from these festivals, from these shows, from being able to like utilize the blueprint that you've laid down. And what are, like, one of the biggest accomplishments you feel like you're proud of so far, like, through this time of being respect the underground and throwing these festivals? The biggest accomplishment of RTU or the festival? Both. Let's Both? Just... The biggest accomplishment initially was manifestation of No Limit Global and Master P. Mm. Because we wrote that on a whiteboard. And when we moved into the office at Color Line, I would say, all right, so when we partner with Master P, you know, who are we going to get signed? And everybody would be like, why do you keep saying when we partner with Master P? P ain't even moving right now. Like, he's doing, like, sneakers or whatever that he was doing. And, like, I was like, no, nah, man, P, P makes a comeback every few years. He does No yes. Limit Forever, No Limit Whatever. What I'm doing. like, I got No Limit Global. I'm going to pitch Master P, and we're going to partner with Master P. And we're going to create No Limit Global and we're going to get artists from Arizona signed. Mm. And by the second Arizona Hip Hop Festival, P pulled up in a stunner with all the No Limit, got out, did a, a like a little Q&A conference with about 30 people. Bougie was there. Swerve was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, he pulled up. We signed a 50-50 deal. He gave me my own label deal with No Limit. Damn. And um, unfortunately, it didn't pan out. Uh, and I'm not going to go into why. But that, that relationship came to a very... It was it was very quick and over quickly. But he came out. He signed artists. We did then did the No Limit Takeover. Got Jay Slug and Nano signed. We did a whole mixtape with Master P Damn. called the Arizona No Limit Takeover, and uh, that was manifestation. So that to me, personally, energetically, frequency alignment like that was me proving to myself something that I wrote that seemed impossible on a board you can make it happen. came to life. That's fact. So next it was Hip Hop Day. Whew. I wanted to create a holiday. Now talk about Hip Hop Day. Man, if it wasn't for my sister, Darina Bustamante, and Mayor, uh, former Mayor Greg Stanton, that wouldn't have been possible. But on the very first festival, I reached out to the mayor's office, and I was like, yo, we're about to throw a festival celebrating Arizona. Can you please come? And they were like, yeah, throw another one. Second one, Master P showed up. Now the mayor's office and City Hall are like, yo, you had Master P out there? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, and he was like, okay, let's talk. So I went into City Hall wearing these J's, ironically, and I sat down with Mayor Stanton the first time I met him, and he was like, explain to me what you do. And I explained it, and he was like, so you're you're teaching artists how to throw shows? 
And no one had ever put it like that. And I was like, I mean, not intentionally, but by like default, yeah. You are about because it, it, the game is in the contract. The game is like when they sit down in the office, we teach them, and then we tell them. And just everyone who sits in my office, the first thing I tell them is, "You know, you don't need me, right?" That's a fact. And they'll look at me like, "What do you mean?" And I'll be like, "You don't need me. You could do this yourself. Like, you can go book a venue yourself. You know that, right?" And then some people process it and take it negative, like I'm trying to be a hater, and some people are like, "How? How do I do that?" And I'm like, "Okay, here, let me show you." And then they sign up for the show. I give them the work. We teach them the process. You've been through it. Yeah. And uh, if you've got jug, you will eat. Every time. You can sell these tickets for for $10. Thanks. If you will get up and text people and invite them and go out and hit First Friday and holler at some bad bitches, be like, what's up, ma? You know, I got this show. Let me buy you two tickets. Please come see me. Like I, I would have if if I was single and I had this this hustle, I would have been at every club night hollering at every girl, possible, and I would have had an audience of women. Cause it comes down to the hustle, man. Like yeah, you gotta have a mouthpiece. There's always the excuses, the complaining. You know, everybody has their own reason, but they never want to speak on their individual hustle. Like, in a hustler, all you gotta do is 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 sell them what they hustling. <laughs> Go flip yeah, it. You sell know what it. I'm saying? Sell it. I'm going to float Straight you up. this work. Straight you know, up. Get it off. Come back for more. The thing is, is you can get as much work from me as you want. I'm never going to cap you out. And, and that's you don't a blessing. owe me any more money. That's crazy. And the thing is, like, they, I never hear any artists talk about that part, about the fact that you never put a cap on how many tickets people could come and get. Bro, it got to the point in 2019 where I, I, I counted how many minutes it took me to count 200 tickets. And these tickets were $60 a piece. Mm. Do the math. Sixty dollars times two hundred. That's a. Uh, that's twelve thousand nice dollars. Nice twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. So I'm giving artists. We do we do simple trap math over here. Yeah, I'm giving artists twelve thousand dollars worth of tickets. So Facts. take it back to the trap. It took me ten. Like it would. So you're having a conversation with an artist. It'll take you four to six minutes to count two hundred tickets because you're in conversation. Facts. So you're having to break them up into stacks of ten on the desk because you'll lose count and have to be like, all right, I got eight. All right, that's eighty, ninety. 100, I went and bought a digital scale at the smoke shop down the street. And I walk in the, the office tickets? and I put it on the table. I'm like, listen, these tickets each weigh 1.2 grams a pop. I'm like, 200 tickets is going to be like 225 grams. I'm like, just take a stack of tickets, put it in the bowl. I don't care if the tickets are over. It's going to save you six minutes. If we have 350 artists times six minutes, that means we just saved 1,800 minutes. That's like fucking six hours. <sighs> Bruh, we weighed <laughs> tickets like work. That's yeah. the that's the that's the gym right there. Yeah, and it, and it, and it and it got to a point where he's able to continuously throw festivals, and we we have a hip hop day here in Arizona. Yeah, he's put on hundreds and hundreds. It's probably like next to like closer to the thousands now of artists that we've put on over just that I've seen in my we've career. We've worked with we've we have eight thousand artists registered to the database, and we have worked with over twenty five hundred artists in the ten year span. See, and that stretches all over the country, not just in Arizona. No, that's all over Alaska, the country. Hawaii. People come here and then they go home and they go, "Yo, Phoenix is lit." Mm. They got a whole ass day. They shut down a whole city block, and it ain't nothing but Arizona hip hop. No than, beef either. That's nah. what's crazy. And we'll have we'll have rival hoods. We'll we'll have Lindo the same and the Vistas having a conversation, and they'll know about it because the flyers have been out. Yeah, everybody know everybody's gonna be. Shit. And, and there's Being no cool. drama. That's a, but you have to realize that's because of the respect that you command and that's your business entity. But it's also have. Blaze. Yes, without Blaze, Blaze and his mixtape. Like what he did in the mixtape game without Blaze living on the South Side. We're gonna have Blaze in here next too. Blaze lived on the South Side. He was active on the South Side. He worked with South Side artists, West Side artists. He was the voice of the streets when it came to the mixtape. Still tapes. is the voice. And then of the you street. have me on the show tip. So when we combined forces, the streets loved us because we spoke the language and it was authentic. What do you feel like was like the hardest thing? through this process becoming like the mayor of the underground like what do you feel like were the hardest like the biggest speed bumps you went through getting to this point um what moments did you feel like you were ready to give up you know because people don't really get to oh, hear man. about that part of it they just get to see the good side of these things you know what I'm you saying you want to give up every year after the festival mm. every year my wife would call it dark winter <sighs> because every year after the festival I would have to reflect on the fact that I just worked for nine months and I had nothing to show for it. 
financially for eight years. No, I'm sorry, seven. No, you're... We didn't make money from the Arizona Hip Hop Festival until until year eight. It's dedication to keep doing that. Shit but like, it cost me my family. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I, I I was so committed to the process and the cause that I I got lost. You know what I'm saying? And like, that shit cost me my family. So it was the festival itself. Like that shit was because you give it everything, and then like after year six, I lost fifty racks. So I put $3 million in the street. Everybody ate. That, that festival where Leach made $1,500, I lost $50,000. Mm. I'm still in debt. So, like, it is what it is. So do you? what do you feel like is, like, advice you would give to somebody that wants to be in a position like that to be able to create a platform that can help hundreds of artists and show them, like, because... At the festivals, it started off as just rap shows, but I, but when we when we go there now, they have like seminars for like artists to like learn legal things. You know what I mean? Like they have like the open mics. You kill the open mic thing. The open, the open mic. mic. <laughs> we changed the open mic game. Yeah, open mics. The ultimate open mic. We would have a line down wash down Washington and First Street all the way two blocks. And we would have over two to three hundred people come and sign up for a free open mic. Just to spit. Man. Just to spit because the prize package would be like a slot on the main stage, five thousand dollars in tickets, five hundred dollars cash, get you some sneakers and a fresh fit. Facts. Pull up looking like you mean business. You know what I'm saying? Because I think like an artist, I'm not gonna let nobody pull up and like I know that if I'm not fresh, I'm not gonna get on stage and rap in front of two thousand. Why would you? I would rather just balk. Your raps better be crazy. Yeah, you but 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 like <laughs> You give somebody cash and tickets and, and a platform and be like, you got three weeks to get your shit together. Mm. Like, if you don't show up fresh, you, you, you're in the wrong motherfucking lane. Oh, but um, what would I tell somebody who to give? I mean, don't do it. You tell them not to do it? Don't do it. You don't have what it takes. Are you saying you saying that sure? Because you don't think people are built like that. No. Nah. No, you have to commit your life to this. It's, it's you gonna... have to love it. You have to own it. It has to be who you are. Facts. And if it's not, don't do it. Get the fuck out of here. You'll fail. You don't have what it takes. So, Most people don't. So tell me, why Why do you feel like it's time to retire? Okay, so this is important. Really. I know, that's why in, I asked. In order for the Arizona Hip Hop Festival to have long-term sustainability for the next 10 years, mm-hmm. and in order for Respect the Underground to continue to thrive and do what it's done, I have to let go of the reins and give them to my staff. Mm. And my staff needs to be able to do it without me. Because one day I'm going to be gone. Whether Mm. it's death or retirement or I just want to move. I got a house in Maui. I'm trying to go like run around with no shirt on and like grow weed. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know what I'm going to do 10 years from now. But all I know is that I'm 42 years old. I've given this game 22 years of my life. 22 years. I'm ready to do something new that has no ceiling. Cannabis. I came from a QP and a half party. It's been... Flipping packs or throwing shows. That's all I know. Other than phone rooms when the block got hot. But that's just because I had to have a shitty job because I needed a paycheck and I couldn't sell weed anymore. But anyways, um, if RTU is to sustain and AC Hip Hop Fest is to continue for there to be a 20th annual Arizona Hip Hop Fest, the team's got to pick up the torch. You feel like you're leaving it in good hands? I'm not totally leaving I'm just passing the torch, mm. and I'm going to quarterback and give them more responsibility. Mm. I'm letting go and, like, giving them, like, listen, you have to do this. The future of the festival and this company lies in your hands. If you drop this ball, you drop, you disappoint the city. You drop the ball on what we've built. Mm. And, like, I'm not going to let them drown. Like, I'm still going to be involved, but I'm not solely responsible for the day-to-day operations of the company anymore. I've started a lifestyle brand with Drip and TrueMed called Drip Luxury Lifestyle. Mm. And we're about to throw private cannabis events and a marijuana music festival. Yeah, I'm going to need my ticket. Yeah, a marijuana music festival. And we're going to drop Drip Apparel, which Mm. is going to be the Gucci of cannabis fucking apparel. Fire. So, like, that's what I'm going into. So I'm not going to be too far away. But my energy is going to the game. Mm. Like, I'm going to have to... In order for this to continue to grow and thrive and be something that the city can be proud of, I have to step aside. Or else when I leave, it's just going to die. So when is the retirement show and where can everybody purchase tickets and where they need to be at? Who do we have performing? 
There's a lot of people performing. I see. Um, it'll be three stages. Live uh, painters. We'll have about a dozen vendors. True Med presents it. Well, I'm going to walk out on stage and light a baseball bat with a blowtorch. I'm going to light it. I'm going to light like a half P in two, in two sticks. We're going to be there. AZ Way Talk yeah. is definitely in the building. You can play T-ball with these bats I'm about to blaze on stage. <laughs> so next but, uh, yeah, no, 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 dead ass. Um, and I'm shooting my video to my farewell single. The farewell single is called 4040 Club. It's featuring Brandon Michael and Bootleg Kev. Mm. Bootleg don't even know he's on the song. Like, he hasn't even heard it yet. I haven't even told him. So, okay. if this comes out and Bootleg, I haven't spoke to you yet. Yeah, we got a record together. I love you, bro. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm shooting the video to my farewell single. I've sent you the record. You've yeah, heard it. So it's, it's very reflective. It is. Um, it has the same, a similar um, sound as the, uh, or a similar um Energy as the farewell uh, disc record. Ironically, they were written the same year. I tucked them because of the pandemic. I didn't feel like releasing music during the pandemic. Mm. I went through some personal things, and uh, it's just uh, it's time to shoot the video to that. And that is that is my formal goodbye to being an MC because mm. I'm not going to be releasing music anymore. And I've got a four song EP that just happened by accident. You know, we just you, you stay creating. So the boss never leaves, but he's gonna step yeah. away from the from the mic. I'm gonna step away and, and let and let the and let the young boys and the young ladies like really step up and own it. And they they're probably gonna fucking shit the bed once in a while. You know, they might drop the ball here and there, but they're gonna learn the process. They're gonna lick their wounds and get up and dust themselves off and do it right. You know, it's you, the only way. Yeah, it's the only way. It's the only way. In order for this to be sustainable, I have to, or else. I'm going I'm to one day just grow tired and be like, yo, I'm out. And disappear. I'll go dark and just shut my social media off and people will be like, yo, what the fuck? What um, what artists are you excited for this year coming up? Yo, really? Like, deadass Merkums is God right now. He's killing it, man. He's fucking killing it. Shout Family. out to Breezeway Management. I'm super fucking proud of him. We got to get Breeze and all them in here. You got to bring the whole team. Yeah. But, like, I've watched Breeze manage artists for the last 10 years. Breeze is an, an integral part of Arizona hip-hop. Mm. Breeze was affiliated with DJ Clue. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Him and fucking, uh, God, man. Him and Joe Budden are family. Yeah. That's why Khalid yeah. got a record with Joe Budden. Facts. You know what I'm saying? That's why Khalid recorded Prodigy from Mob Deep. Mm. Like, Khalid and, 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 uh, and Breeze and uh, Essence... You know, eighty five fresh. Eighty five fresh. Like, like they just they've he's been grinding, you know, and like it's their time. They deserve this. Mm-hmm. Markham's earned it. He's rapping his ass off. He's spazzing on records. The Markham's he's using right social media for what it's for. Like, and I have no vested interest in Merck or Breeze or any of them. I just real recognize real Merck is that guy right now. This is his year. Um, who else? Brown boy Maj. Is like my favorite. So it's Alexis, Arizona, man. One of my favorite Arizona artists, Alexis. I still call him by his original name, but he got that single with T Pain and Snow the Product. Records incredible. <laughs> Records fucking incredible. Kev is is, is managing Alexis. Um, that's incredible. J Rob just signed with NPR. You know that's a beautiful thing. NPR is like so low key one of the biggest influences in Arizona hip hop, and people don't even know. Like, Caleb is the one running it. Like, Caleb manages nah. Xavier Wolf. A lot of people don't know that, and though. Mackie Ro- Mikey Rotten and fucking, like, Eddie Baker and shit. A lot of people don't know none of those he's, things. He's, he's a dude who runs Aura in Press Room. Facts. But, like, Aura is low-key the most popping hip-hop live concert venue right now for, like, that next wave of national acts. And Monarch is, like, the home of Arizona hip-hop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, like... Personally speaking, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Alexis and Merck. I'm excited for V's new album with his Rick Ross feature. Go salute to V. We v, v on here. Ithaca. You know what I'm saying? V got a real album. He's been quiet for a whole year just stacking his crypto. Just dropping crypto knowledge on everybody. Yeah, just telling people to buy XRP. <laughs> you know, so like V's going to drop an incredible project. I hope that comes out this year. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? I know you got something cooking. I'm always cooking, man. Always cooking. Is my fucking man. Yeah, I'm always, I mean, I'm a fan. So, um, shit, who else? Who else? Who else is fucking shaking and moving? The Maniacal Militants are brand new to this, uh, the scene as a group. But they they are, they got some good people on their team. They work their asses off, and they got more of like a Tech Nine, Juggalo, like 
Cottonmouth King kind of vibe to them, mm-hmm. and they snap on records. So, like, you, you'll see them. They're, they're going to be at the festival? Yeah, they're, they're closing it out. Uh, they're closing it out, and I I'm put excited my stamp for the on festival. Them. I'm excited. I put my stamp on. And you co sign them? Yeah, Bet. yeah. They're gonna pull up 300 deep. Tell them to send some music to the live. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For real, absolutely. There's a lot of good. I mean, Big Doobie, he's awesome. You know, he's out Still here shaking and moving. Who Still the pest. You know, it's yeah. Pest got a strong team. Pest yeah. holds the most consistent open mic at Tasso's Grill, on motherfucker in Northside Phoenix every Wednesday. 17 in Union Hills. You know what I'm saying? He in there really putting on, giving away money every week, and all you got to do is buy a ticket to get in, show up, and rap. Facts. And they got fire hot wings. We got to get Pest in here. Get, yeah. get the whole Pest squad yeah. in here. For real. Yeah, Beat Locker killing it. You know, uh, Blaze and Poke over there at Beat Locker. Poke is my OG. If it wasn't for Poker Face, Cutthroat Logic would have not been what it is today. Poker Face will be on the show. Poke put me on. Mm. TMC, his management, put me on. Mm. Without TMC and Poke. I don't know if there'd be an RTU. Mm. No cap. Fire. Give them flowers while they're here, man. Salute to yeah. the real ones. This is, this right here, this person right here is someone that you'll always be able to soak in from because he's laid that foundation and, it, and, it, and it's there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can see it. There's, there's plenty of entities that are utilizing the blueprint in some way, shape, or form right now, even though Yo, they might you know not want to give credit. told me yesterday? They said, listen, this is great. He said, motherfuckers hated you so much that they went and and all the people that hated you like clicked up together and went and started rival companies that do the same thing. It's a beautiful thing, huh? Bro, that's that's so beautiful. It's crazy how it works because even though like they're bad, you still gave them something that they have to use. It's a blessing. And I, and I wish them the best. Yeah, facts. Ain't no shame. That's what's so But beautiful. I will show up and make everybody real uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh, man. Tell them where they can find you and find everything, man. Let them know where they can fi- follow the whole entire platform. Um, when, Like I said, let them know one more time when they can come to the show. And what Saturday, May 14th, Monarch Theater, home of Arizona Hip Hop Underground. Uh, doors open at 12. It is 12 to 8. True Med presents 21 plus. Leave your kids at home. Fuck them kids. Fuck that couch. Um, okay, you can find me at justice underscore RTU. At AZ Hip Hop Fest on the Instagram, um, I'm I'm active on Facebook where the old people go to play, you know. So uh, yeah, you know, just us, J U S T U S, real real name, no gimmicks. Look me up, Google me, you know, you can't miss me. I'm out there. Yeah, salute to Justin, salute to the North Side, salute to AZ. Definition of active, they like Prince Curtis kicking in this thing. Uh, we out, man. AZ. Hey, we, we will come together and we will celebrate Arizona hip hop as a whole. Every block. Every hood, every barrio, every street, every gang, every crew, every click. We will fly our colors and we will float our flags with Arizona pride because we are a new AZ. A new AZ will be born on October 18th. Five nations, one fist, black, white, 